Welcome to the Concentric Home Solution channel. In this video, I will be talking about the Festool track saw and its associated tracks and accessories that makes this the perfect tool for breaking down large sheets. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the bell notification. It's my belief that the Europeans, specifically the Germans, came up with this track saw for us Americans. I believe they was looking at some American woodworking programming or something, and they felt so sorry for us. They saw us doing this crazy thing, trying to break down a sheet good, standing off in one corner, lifting up a 55, 60 year old man, trying to handle this four by eight sheet, holding it catty corner and pushing it up against a rip fence. And, and, and that was ridiculous. What was even more ridiculous is seeing one trying to cross cut a four by eight sheet, which if you, you know, have any understanding of mechanical devices, you create a fulcrum on one end, and then you have a lever action going on. Extremely dangerous. So, seeing that their saws, the European sliding saw, sliding table saw, was actually designed for processing large sheet goods, maybe like for ripping or cross cutting, very safely. And very easy as far as a process so you could do it accurately it's not strenuous they felt sorry for us because we came up with a saw that in my opinion is great for joinery you could do all type of jigs and so forth that you typically can't do with a european saw and i love our cabinet saw for that and is a very competent ripping tool so they came up with this. As I was saying, the American table saw was never designed for processing sheet goods. I'm gonna repeat it. The American table saw, the one we use, you call it a Western table saw, cabinet saw, whatever you wanna call it. It was never designed. At least I don't think it was. If it was designed to do this, it was a poor design. But as it sits, as it is, as it exists, the American table saw was never designed for processing sheet goods. I have two manuals in front of me right here from two different manufacturers. One is Shop Fox, the other, Craftsman. It was my first table saw, actually. When I sold it, I forgot to give the gentleman the manual. I keep the manual for all my products, by the way. And, and you should too. And I was never able to make contact with him anymore, so I still have the manual. Hey, if you're out there, contact me. I have your manual. And I want you to notice something. They don't say it outright in a manual because in my opinion, there's a little bit of politics going on. You will see in each one of them, only in one dimension, you see a sheet good being used on the contractor and the cabinet saw. Two different manufacturers now. There, there's an image of them showing you using an outfeed table. Because once again, the American cabinet saw was not designed to process um, sheet goods. So you have to create aids to help you to do that. They will show you uh, an example of ripping a sheet good with a recommended outfit table. And the same thing, 
For Craftsman, same thing for Shop Fox. And I willing to bet you it's gonna be the same thing in your Powermatic manual. It's gonna be the same thing in your Delta manual. It's gonna be the same thing in your Saw Stop manual. They're gonna show you examples of using that saw with its rip fence, ripping a sheet. Never cross cutting. And it's because why I just tell you, they're not gonna put themselves in a situation of liability. Lever action. First of all, you're not supposed to straddle the blade outside of the lever action, which causes kickback. You're not supposed to straddle the blade. Your stance, and I will show you your stance, for those who don't know, your stance at the table saw is supposed to be like this, and you're not supposed to be directly in line with the blade. Most people who are into woodworking should know this. So that's the reason why you will never see that in a manual. When you see an example of cross-cutting in a manual, it's going to be with the miter gauge, which is obviously for, you know, thinner stock. Or you will see an example of a sled. That's why sleds are so popular here. But, you know, sled only take you so far. You can't process a sheet good unless you have an extremely giant sled and you have secondary, you know, supports and so forth like that. Because I think I've seen an example one time of somebody breaking down. I don't think it was a 4 by 8 but it was a, a, a wider, deeper piece using a large sled. Now, some manufacturers has come up with devices that allows you to mimic a European slider. Sharp Fox, not sorry, do Sharp Fox have one? I think they do, by the way. Either under the Sharp Fox or Grizzly brand, brand, I think they do have one. I think their one actually came out before the Saw Stop, but I meant to say Saw Stop has one. And I think General was one of the first people that was doing that because, you know, the Canadians tend to follow us. <laughs> they tend to do the same thing. They have the same style saw as we do. But these devices was not intended for breaking down, especially cross-cutting. So I say that to say this, big game changer for me in a shop was the Festool 55 and his guide rail. I got tired and I, I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. There have to be a better way trying to manhandle a piece of uh, plywood. I hate moving plywood. If you're anything like me, you probably hate moving plywood too, handling plywood is heavy, especially as you get older. And most, most woodworkers are older, middle-aged and up. We know that, stop kidding ourselves. First time I ever took my wife to a trade show and the only one she ever went with, with me, she made the observation. At the time I was like in my thirties, you know, why did I pick up an old man's hobby? <laughs> because everybody on the floor was old men for the most part. I probably was the youngest or one of the youngest people at the show. So it's kind of ridiculous to be ha handling large sheets. Uh, the Festool came up with a system allow you to bring the cutting device to the workpiece. And you can't do accurate work trying to manhandle uh, a large sheet and keep it and keep it against a fence. That's, that's construction work. That's not fine craftsmanship. That's a construction worker. I mean, I'm not trying to knock construction worker. When I say construction worker, I mean rough carpentry. If you're trying to balance a four by eight sheet against a fence, that's not fine woodworking. That's a construction worker. Pathway effect. So this saw uh, was a game changer for me. This whole setup is extremely ingenious. You have uh, what amounts to like a dado hair that has some adjustability. You have a rib hair that it sits on. You can adjust it snug to it. 
where you have no play and it rides on this. And many of us in the past had to make up uh, a jig to do that. And a jig was good, but it, the jig doesn't compare to this. Right now, I'm using a smaller one, but you can get them. You can rip. They sell them long enough to where you can rip a 4x8 sheet. Cross cut, no problem. Now, the limitation is now on this, as it comes, you have to make marks. And no matter how good you are, your marks is not going to be precise. We all know this, right? Especially over a long distance. Companies such as TSO came up with a device that turns your track into a T-square. So what you do is you rip one clean edge on your sheet good, and then you add this fence You notice, you know, one end went into this, and this is your reference. These are your two reference surfaces. So that y'all can see here. And it clamps on. And now, uh, any of y'all that have a drafting background, this is acting like a mock T-square. It, it doesn't come to the other side, obviously, because that's where your blade runs. But now you have a T-square. And this thing is a giant reference square. I say reference square because it's very, very, very accurate. They're not joking when they say table saw cut quality. This thing is extremely accurate. When it's not in use, everything in reverse. You put it away until the next time you're ready to use it. Well built. Well built. All machine aluminum. This company makes it right here in the United States. I think they're out of Florida. So, once again, the American table saw was not designed. I seen people online, I see one crazy video, and let me take one minute to say something. Just because you see somebody on TV doesn't mean that they're an expert by any means. Many times, these people you see on TV, not all the time, many times, these people you see on TV are paid actors. And they will tell you all type of crazy thing, one person holding one end, and the other person controlling the piece. You just add another person. I, I can't even begin to explain how ridiculous that concept is. One was bad enough when it was just you. You're trying to hold your right hand, trying to keep the piece. You have less material on the right side of the blade. You have more material on the left side of the blade. Because it's bad enough to try to cut it down in the center, which is probably the safest way of cross-cutting a sheet of plywood. It's still not safe in my opinion, but when it's half and half, it's a whole lot safer than when you have the smaller piece on the right side of the blade and you have the longer piece on it, even with support. There's a natural tendency. Our right hand and our left hand are not equal. Nothing is equal. One hand is longer than the other. One hand is stronger than the other. Let it be that you're right-handed or left-handed. Same thing with all of your other appendages, your legs, whatever. One is longer than the other. And if you just tip that thing a little bit, a half of, the, of a degree, a fraction of a degree, 
you're going to run into bills of trouble. When you're ripping, that is not a problem because the majority, if not everything, or even if it's not the majority, if you're trying to rip something in half, you could you stand to one side and all of your pushing motion is on the right. Plus the fact you have a riving knife, hopefully, and a table saw guard, hopefully, and some type of anti-kickback device like Paul's or, uh, or um, what do you call that? The guides by Jessam, the Jessam table saw guides, something, feather board, something to help you keep the board registered against the fence. Or old trick I used to do, lock my hand on the edge of the table saw and keep my finger against it locked to help keep it steady against the fence before I had those devices. But why do it to yourself? Sheet goods, MDF, particle boards. I don't really mess with those things anymore. Plywood, still use. Baltic birch, love. A track saw. For me, the original. And a guide rail. It's the only sensible way. If you don't have either a panel saw, like what you see at the Home Depot, or Lowe's, or a European sliding table saw. This is the only other sensible way of breaking down a sheet good. Don't let anybody tell you anything otherwise. This is the only sensible way. The European sliding saws were designed for processing sheet goods. The American saws was not. And they're not safe. Don't let anybody tell you or talk you into doing that. If you're one of the older guys or gals that are set in your way and you insist that's, that's, that is safe and you want to do that, well, that's on you. Just remember, personal responsibility when something happened is not a manufacturer's fault. Everybody wants to sue when they do something to themselves, when they cause some harm to themselves. Just remember, when you choose to take a risk, if and when something goes wrong, you have to accept responsibility for the risk that you took. The horse is already dead. So this is probably the last time you hear me insisting on this. Each one of these devices come with manuals. And it was written by both the, <laughs> by, uh, by the, 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 the technical writers along with the marketing team and most importantly, the legal team of those companies. It was to, mainly to prevent liability. There's a lot of warning messages in here. There's a lot of things shown and not shown. <laughs> That's where the marketing comes in. They try to be careful because they don't want to upset the, the, the guy who's been doing it for 50 years I say, you know, God damn it, I've been doing this for 50 years and that's the way I've done it and I've never hurt myself. Those type of people, they don't want to offend them, which is, most, which is mainly their client base, as I said before. Those of us that, that are in the majority that enjoy this is are of middle age or older. So they don't want to offend the people set in their way, so they play a little game. They will show you the right way of doing something and the thing that they don't want to get into the weed of they will just exclude it but the device is called a rip fence not a cross cut fence not a fence it's called a rip fence words have meaning matter gauge cross cutting rip fence for ripping that tells you that the saw was never intended to process sheet goods. That's my argument. I spent so much on the saw, right? But once again, your best friend for processing in a small shop, especially. You don't have space for a slider. You don't have space for a panel saw. Your best friend. This and this. 
game changers. You add this to it, next level. Thank you for watching this video. And as usual, be safe in the shop. Highly recommend this. Thank you and have a good day. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to be notified when new content is dropped on this channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification and drop a comment down below.